happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back to The Big Thing. This is going to be myself. I'm going to be talking about a lot of different things that are coming up in the uh, entertainment news world, world, world of news, news, movie, news, news, stuff. So um, let's see what happened. What's going on? Well, we're definitely talking about that Fantastic Beast trailer. Um, I think I'm one of the only people in the world that was uh, excited to see a third film. Did they deliver on the trailer? Are people excited? We'll talk about that. Uh, the Golden Globe nominations are out. Um, what got nominated? What did people see? I finally saw The Last Duel. I'll give my thoughts on that. Uh, there were some rumors about the Batman. What's happening? A little minor trailer came out. A little cameo action happening. Who knows? So much happening in the world of, of news so far. And let's be honest. Everybody's getting excited because uh, Spider-Man's coming out. I'm going to see it today. Tra uh, the review will be out tonight. So that's just a, a bunch of things. And I'm going to take a bunch of questions from you guys. Some great questions today. So I'm going to go over all that. So let's get into this thing. Let's go. Let's talk about the big thing. And before we even do that, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not subscribed, please go ahead and do that. Subscribe. Click the notification button. That's the main thing. Even if you're subscribed, go to that bell. Let you know every time we have one of these shows going on, every time I have a review or a trailer, let you know about that. But the other thing that you should also know is about the podcast feed. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever podcasts are found. But that's why we get such great sponsors lately because you guys, even if you're watching this on YouTube, please, 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 please subscribe, download the episodes, follow us on Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Very, very important. But anyway, let's get into this. Thing. It's a big thing. Peace. What's up, everybody? Big thing. Monday. It's a week. It's a big week for movies, movie news. It really is big in general when you think about where we've been the last, you know, two years or whatnot. You got Spider Man coming out. This is like a massive movie. I know we've had some big movies that have opened up, whether it was Shang Chi or uh, Black Widow and a lot of Marvel stuff, you know. But the question is. How will this movie do? What's the big thing? Well, on on Wednesday, box office predictions. I already have my review at that point up, but um, but I'm pre-taping an episode with Matt Nost. Matt Nost is going to come in and be on the show on Wednesday, so we're going to be um, kind of predicting what's going to go on. And my prediction could change from the time that we tape this thing to the time that I see it, but we'll see. Who knows? But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about a lot of different things that are going on in the world of uh, of movie news. So the first thing that um, happened today was this uh, Fantastic Beast trailer. So as I mentioned in the top of the show, um, I believe I'm on a, a small island with people that actually are excited about this movie because I didn't hate the second one. Everybody hates the second movie. I didn't hate the second one. Uh, I was sitting next to both Perry Nemiroff and Mark Ellis who looked like someone just opened up a bag of trash and put it under their nose. Um I didn't feel that way. I don't remember a damn thing about it. I haven't probably watched it since, but I do want to see it. Now they recast Johnny Depp. And now you got Mads Mikkelsen, who always plays a good bad guy. So and that looks like that's exactly what he's doing in this one. They're playing a little bit more with Ho um, Hogwarts Castle, <laughs> the old Wartsy Hogs, and um, and yeah. So they, they're trying. They're obviously trying to bring back, pun intended, the magic. Um, it doesn't, I mean, obviously it's, it's pretty heavy on Eddie Redmayne. He's the, he's the lead character, but they're, they're leaning really towards Dumbledore and showing you, this is what you liked about Harry Potter. And we kind of forgot that in the first two movies with all the silliness going on with all the fantastic beasts as it is happily named, um, in the title. The, you know, you're going to get the, this band of renegades that have to go up against this Voldemort replacement is ultimately what, what this guy is, right? Um, this was a... It, it, the thing that always... This movie that works against it, against the... You know, when you compare it to Harry Potter, is that Harry Potter were these flushed-out novels that were adapted into very successful movies. When there's these... When you just write in the screenplays, it's, it's a little tougher to do, as movies have proven, you know? Um, it's also why I, I sing to the heavens about why I still don't understand why Lucasfilm 
isn't taking their novels and adapting them into films. You have the stories. They work. Lost Stars, Darth Bane trilogy, uh, the Darth Plague is now or, or turning them into series. This is stuff that works. And it, and it's there's stories that that have that have worked and a lot of people have not read them minus the, you know, the hardcore fans. So writing a screenplay is tougher to do, obviously. Um, and these three movies have just been screenplays. Um, and I also think that it's tougher because you don't like the character of Newt as much as you liked these kids and watching what Harry was going to do and the build up to Harry Potter, who was going to play Harry Potter and all the people who had read Harry Potter already familiar with Harry Potter. Um, you, by, Newt hasn't grown on people. He's annoyed some people. He hasn't annoyed me. I liked him, but he's annoyed a lot of people. So this trailer, I think, does get back to the roots of Harry Potter for sure. And you, obviously, but just going back to Hogwarts in general and then battling this this wizard. I This one, this has to be it, though. Well, they did. How many movies did they say they were going to do? I think a lot. But if this one doesn't do very well and it doesn't crush, um, th- I mean, they could turn the whole thing around. Very similar to, I mean, not not the same kind of hype as Matrix because Matrix is Matrix has a lot going for it as how it, Matrix can revive itself. People want Matrix to to you know come back and and they're they're just rooting for it. With this one, I think people are like. Okay, if it does good, then great. If it doesn't, I don't need to see another one. Um, and this trailer, I don't think is one of the. I don't think this trailer is going to get everyone on board saying, "Up, oh, need to see it. Gotta see Fantastic Beast three. Need to see it." Obviously, they're they're banking on it. Warner Brothers needs it to work. But I still, I I think didn't they say? I feel like they did say that there's going to be a, a a Hogwarts television show for HBO Max. Am I wrong about that? I know that. Roxy was calling for it for years. They definitely should. I mean, now with all the stuff that they've got coming out, and I think more and more people are going to start doing this type of stuff. And if you can get some of the characters or some more people towards, I think you do it after the events of Harry Potter this time. No more, no more prequel stuff. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm, as I said, I would have been excited to see this regardless of the trailer. I'm excited to see it. I want to see how it plays out. Um, I want to. I like the little transition of showing. Dumbledore as we know him in the movies and then showing him as a young man portrayed by by Jude Law so uh, you know I'm, I'm on board what about you guys do you care I feel like a lot of you are going to tell me no but maybe I'm wrong maybe there's maybe there's a few of us that actually want to see this thing or like the trailer that's a, probably a better question for you if you're watching right now or listening um did were you like no I'm done and then you saw the trailer and like okay I'll give it one more shot or the opposite like okay i was ex- i, I was i was kind of done and i was waiting for the trailer to say okay can I come back in but the trailer didn't do anything for me so i'm definitely done i'm very curious and i've been uh, i've been commenting back to everybody i took the whole weekend i've been doing that doing a lot of that commenting back and and i think it's very important to do so so if you're listening i saw somebody who said i don't know, normally comment very much i actually first time doing it or second time doing it um i said keep doing it man i'm gonna i'm gonna respond to everybody it might take me like you know a week or two to do it but i go through i try to go through on the if i don't get to it right away i go through on the weekends and i just reply to everybody um and there's been real i mean honestly i mean because you know what got me about it and and this is something that i can't remember who said i mean it's been said many times over but i think that there was a time where especially a couple years back and if I saw like a negative comment, I would go back on it and I, you would try to, whether it was comedy or sarcasm or anger and go back and forth with a person. And, and I saw the comments like, you know, you always respond into the negative comments and I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm trying to have a conversation about it and I, I really enjoy the show and I've never gotten a response. And I was like, that person's a hundred percent right. What am I like? What am I doing? The whole point is that you're trying and you're trying to do a, um, you're trying to have a conversation, you're trying to build community and there's always going to be turds. Is I mean, right now we're almost twenty five thousand subscribers, and there's um, there's there's few turds. There'll be more turds. There's always turds, but the thing is, you flush the turds. You don't you don't take them out and and say, oh look at these turds. Let's polish these turds. You can't polish a turd. So that's what I've been doing. I've been there's some people that 
I'll I'll respond to if there's like a, a negative comment and let people know like certain things that if they if they say something I, I give a I'll do like a test I'll say all right look here's here's the honest answer to to your question now that person they go okay look I didn't I didn't see it I didn't I didn't know that that's a particular thing let's talk about this fine maybe I shouldn't have been maybe I was in a bad mood or I shouldn't approach you that way it says that's happened many times over having those conversations with someone like okay yeah because you're you're on the opposite side of a computer screen right but then there's people as michael kane said that just want to watch the, wor the world burn and there's people who are just coming in to look for a fight and those people as i said i used to respond to it now just delete it i don't really necessarily you know it's like you let people they'll be find other places to scream i don't need to scream back i'm just too i'm too fucking tired to be honest with you i like talking with you guys and and going back and forth and having conversations and laughing it's 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 it, it has made my life so much better mental health wise over the last year also that's why i keep telling people people keep asking like about you know this show and i tell people like out of all the stuff that i've ever done easily this this iteration is is by far my favorite it's just the best mental headspace i've ever been in it's the best conversations i've ever had with people i like the crew that i'm surrounded by you know it's just it's just it's just a lot of fun it's just a lot of fun so anyway let's move on over um yeah, let's move on over. We'll do another story. So the next story, I got a bunch. I got to find them. I got some. They're somewhere. I hear they are. We did that one. Um, the Batman's got some stuff coming out. The Batman has a few things. There's a, that, that trailer. I don't know where it was from. It was an international trailer. I didn't watch it, though, to be honest with you. I didn't want to. Something about the Riddler. and something, I, I just I didn't want I didn't want to. Someone asked me, what well, can you do a, a reaction to it? And I was going to. And I and I definitely will do a reaction to the to the uh, the major trailer when it drops again for sure. Uh, I just I don't know. It was when it's I saw what the detail of the trailer was. I was like I don't, I don't I'll see it in a big trailer. I don't want to get these little tidbit trailers. It's also why I've been doing the ones for Spider Man. I know there's been a ton of Spider Man TV trailers and things too that I just I don't want to keep getting that kind of detail. I like I think even in big trailers I give too too much away. It's also why I've been pretty excited about the Matrix. Still, I have a I have a general idea about what's going on, but I don't need to know any more. You know, I don't need to. I don't feel like I've been spoiled from it. Um, I have stopped watching some of the Spider Man coverage because I just don't want to be spoiled by it. I'm going to see it tonight, as I mentioned. I'm going to go see it tonight. I'm seeing it with Winston. Coy's seeing it separately. So we are. I'll give you. Oh yeah, some programming stuff so you guys know. This Friday, we're doing Matrix Reloaded comes out. Matrix Reloaded um, uh, rewatch. Matrix Revolutions will be on Christmas Eve. Um, so the review of the new movie will be before that. Um, the non-spoiler review will, will come out probably a couple days beforehand. And then we'll do like a full-on me and Koi because Kate's going to be out of town on what is that the uh the 27th 20 whatever that monday is after uh, after christmas and then we'll do a full spoiler on, on matrix as far as spider-man goes obviously a lot of spider-man content this week we're gonna do i'm going to see it tonight and then uh the non-spoiler review will drop tonight the embargo lifts so i'll do the non-spoiler review i'll do a, a a spoiler review probably over the weekend saturday i'll have a spoiler review of that uh it'll be a shorter one, 15, 20 minutes or whatnot. And then the full breakdown with myself, Winston, and Coy, where we really kind of dive in and talk about it on this show will be um, next Monday, so a week from today. So just so you guys have an idea of what we're doing, a lot of, a lot of coverage between that. Um, I got reviews of The Kingsman coming up. I got review of The Matrix. I got review of, um, of a, lot of a lot of different things. A lot of different things coming up. But as far as the Batman goes, other stuff to tear into the Batman, um, that trailer... Okay, didn't see it. So there's rumors here that's going on with the Batman, so you guys know. Um, and there's a little spoiler if you don't want. I just read it from Dark Horizons. So the rumor is that there might be, that there's like two cuts of the Batman, and one, I think, with the Joker and one without, and they're seeing how it plays. That's that's what the rumor is. I don't know which one they're going to use. And and dude from uh, from the Eternals, it's a Barry Keon, I, I, I'm not gonna, don't, don't come to this show for names. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do it. It's not, it's not, it's not a thing that you should do. Uh, do the research then, buddy. No, no, 
No, I'm not. I'll, I'll read, and then I'll forget, and you guys can correct me in the comments. That's what we do here. Let's not fuck around with... This is not a show where I'm going to dive in and start giving you all the notes and everything. Do your notes. Do your research. Fuck off. I'll tell you what I saw today, and that's how we're going to talk about what we're going to talk about. All right? This is a conversation. That's it. So Barry I like him. He's good. He's good in Dunkirk, and he's good in Eternal. So if he is the Joker, if that's the case, great. I think he'd be great. He's got a good darkness to him. He's got a... a Great. It's the 75th iteration of the Joker. So let's get a good actor in there to do it. Um, and, uh, and then there's a rumor that Tom Hardy is an extra in the, in the movie because he was filming uh, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and uh, him and his co-star were running around, and they, uh, they're in the background. Apparently, they're, they're going to use it or not use it. I don't know. Is it cool? Fine. Yeah, it's nice. I like it. Tom Hardy's great, but, you know. Uh, I think I really want to see him in, um, in a Star Wars film. Obviously, him or Fassbender, I'd love to see them in a Star Wars film or, or a Star Wars series. Eventually, it could happen. Who knows? I don't. Do you? I don't. Damarera, ladies and gentlemen, Damarera. Okay, before I jump on over, because there's tons of stuff still. There's all the Golden Globe nominations and so many questions for you guys, movies that you've seen and not seen. Um, I want to tell you about Butcher Box. I know I've been telling you about Butcher Box and how much I love Butcher Box. God, I love it so much. We, we, what did we do the other day, this, uh, this weekend? We had, um, I mean, well, we, everything we did was, was butcher box. We did turkey burgers for butcher box. And we did, um, we did chicken tenders. The chicken tenders. Oh, so good. I'm telling you, I never thought my wife would ever, would ever go from anywhere except the grocery store, but she loves butcher box now. She just loves it. Cause when it comes to the meat that will be the centerpiece, especially for the holiday season, you gotta have quality. And when you invest in high quality meat from Butcher Box, the benefits go way beyond a great tasting meal. This is what Butcher Box does. They source their meat from partners with the highest standards for quality. There's no more searching the grocery store for 100% grass fed uh, beef, a free range organic chicken, wild caught seafood, and more. Their sourcing decisions are made holistically, keeping the farmer, the planet, the animal, and your family in mind. I don't know what my overall favorite is, to be honest with you. The chicken tenders are are probably the champions at the moment. The turkey burgers were delicious. Um, I got the New York strips that I'm ready to throw on the grill. I mean, they have got I've got salmon. I've got so much in my freezer right now from Butcher Box. You would think that I started the company. I love it. I love it so much. We just did the turkey burgers yesterday, and people and and. I had my father-in-law over. He just comes over, and he doesn't, you always know when the conversation just stops when people are eating because they're just enjoying the taste of the, of, the, of the food, and that was what was going on yesterday. It was delicious. People love Butcher Box, and they should. I like it because it's, it's pretty easy. It's convenient. Quality is delicious, as I told you, but the cost. You save so much money buying all the meats at the grocery store all the time. And you got to worry about if it's going to, when the expiration date is going to be, and if, if there's any of the stuff that you have you want, you want left. Nah, not anymore. Every month, Butcher Box just ships a curated selection of high quality meat right to your home. Free shipping for the continental U.S. There's no antibiotics, added hormones. Each box contains eight to 14 pounds of meat. It depends on the box you choose. That's enough for 24 individual meals. They pack it fresh and it's shipped frozen for your convenience so you can save time on your next grocery store trip. I customize the box. But you can do, they have great choices also where they just, they kind of go with one of their own. Either way, it doesn't matter. You get exactly what you want. The, this holiday, Butcher Box is going to give new members one pack of bacon for free in every box, plus $20 off each box for the first five months of your membership. That's free bacon for life and up to $100 off. Sign up at butcherbox.com slash big thing. Butcherbox.com slash big thing. Oh my God, I love Butcher Box so much. It's so good. It's so good. I've told, I've, how many times have I told you about it? And you still haven't gotten it? As Julia Roberts says, big mistake. All right, moving on over. Um, I want to get to these Golden Globes nominations. Where are these things? I've got to find the Golden Globes. Is that it? There you are. The Golden Globes nomination. Now, now the Golden Globes in general, the, the ceremony and all that, it's, it's, it's turned out to be a bit of a joke, right? It, it, you know, people don't really take it that serious. But the thing is, with Golden Globes, it does start to preview what people are talking about. 
and the movies people are talking about it. What's going on? Who's who are the ones that are, you know, that everyone's uh, th- th- what's on the radar? Because that that to me, to be honest with you, that is what this season with the last two years because of all the streaming stuff and people not going to theaters as much and not being as locked in as I was in the past. And, and I get a lot of stuff that that's sent that it's like, okay, well, is this the one? Did I watch this one? Is this one in contention? Do I, I, mean, I don't know. So here are the ones that these, these are the nominations just for Golden Globes. This doesn't necessarily mean anything, but this is what I, this is what is nominated. Okay. Belfast heard a lot about Belfast. Have it, probably should watch it. Coda, I know nothing about it. Dune, loved it. King Richard, loved it. Power of the Dog, watched the trailer last night, very interested in it. So I know that one. Best performance by an actress in a motion picture. Jessica Chastain, the eyes of Tammy Faye, interested in it, want to see it. Olivia Coleman, The Lost Daughter. Alonzo Duralde just told me about Lost Daughter. Told me I need to see it. It's very powerful. This is one of his best movies. So, And I love Alonzo. So, uh, Nicole Kidman. Being the Ricardos as Lucy, I was I was skeptical on that when when the casting came out for that one. To be honest with you, I didn't know how she was going to pull it off, but she's getting rave reviews. So curious about that. Lady Gaga, House Gucci, saw that one. Kristen Stewart, Spencer, got to finish that one up. Um, but that a lot of people were talking about that one. Best performance by an actor in a motion picture. Mahershala Ali, Swan Song. Yeah, I don't. I haven't seen a lot of these movies. Javier Bardem, Being the Ricardos, Benedict Cumberbatch, Power of the Dog, Will Smith, King Richard, Denzel, Tragedy of Macbeth. No, Andrew Garfield. Maybe, well. There you go. Okay, never mind. Andrew Garfield's. Oh, wait, he's still. Where is he? He's got, okay, he's going to be nominated for the other one. Okay, never mind. I don't understand these stupid categories: musical or comedy. How it's so, they're so different. It's, how, they're so different. How do you compare the stupid Golden Globes? Stupid. All right. Uh, best motion picture, musical or comedy. Did I miss this stuff? No, no. no. Okay. Cyrano. Don't look up. Licorice Pizza. Tick, tick, boom. West Side Story. You gotta assume West Side Story will win that. And we'll talk about that in a second at the box office for that one. Best performance by an actress in a motion picture, musical or comedy, Marion Cotillard, Annette, Lana Haim, Licorice Pizza, Jennifer Lawrence, don't look up. Nobody's seen that yet, basically. Emma Stone, Cruella, and Rachel Zegler, West Side Story. That's I mean, my vote, but again, I've seen two out of those five movies. So um this is definitely the year that I have seen the least in, inside of the stuff nominated. But I will be going. But I will be catching up with all this stuff. That's that's the that's the thing. Best performance by an actor in a motion picture, musical or comedy. Leonardo DiCaprio, Don't Look Up. Peter Dinklage, Cyrano. Andrew Garfield, Tick Tick Boom, Fantastic. Cooper Hoffman, Licorice Pizza. Anthony Ramos in The Heights. No, oh, interesting. Bernardo was really good. Interesting. Best motion picture animated in Can- in Canto, Flea, Luca, My Sunny Mad, and Raya and the Last Dragon. Okay, best motion picture, foreign language, compartment number six, drive my car, the hand of God, a hero, parallel mothers. All right, there's a lot of, lot of there's, let's go best director here. Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, Jane Champion, Power of the Dog, Champion, excuse me, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal, The Lost Daughter, Steven Spielberg, West Side Story, Denis, Denis Villeneuve, Dune. All right, so basically, Power of the Dog is something I really need to see, Licorice Pizza. I mean, that, that does put stuff on the radar, you know. That's that's basically all all this for Golden Globes. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you what I think is going to win and what's what's not. i got to see Power of the Dog. I think the trailer looked really good. The Unforgivable, that Sandra Bullock thing, that's not getting any buzz. I watched uh, I watched a little bit of it last night. I was, in, I was enjoying it. I didn't realize that the kid from Sandlot was in it. That, that upped it for me. I'm going to have some cold coffee for a second here. Mmm, terrible. Okay. So, Golden Globes... I don't know. Nobody really gives a shit. But like I said, it's a matter of what's 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 on the radar. And to me, Power of the Dog stands out the most. Uh, Licorice Pizza, I hear either you, either you hate it or you or you really or people really enjoy it. I haven't uh, haven't seen it. Don't know. I just it's so funny because like uh, I this is another reason going back to what I was talking about earlier about with this show is that I just I like seeing what I want to see now. Like not having that, here the movie's coming out. All right, Mark, we got a we had a screening now at the, got to be there at Wednesday. Um, and I and and look to be fair, those days were great too because there were a lot of times where we didn't know what the hell we were about to see. We want to come and seeing something that was really great. Like there's probably there's probably tons of movies here that I'm missing that I'm going to really enjoy, but I like doing it at my own time. You know what I mean? Like I like that. I like that aspect of it. Like for example, Last Duel. Um. 
I just saw it. Let me just throw this stupid thing up now. Where is it? Hold on a second, everybody. Where is the last tool? I have it somewhere. It'll be here. Where is the last tool? Where is the last tool? It is... Oh, that's not it. There it is. The last tool. Ridley Scott, second movie in the... Uh, in the year for this was the first out of the two. It was produced by Affleck and, and Damon. Stars him, Adam Driver. I gotta find out what this girl's name is because she a woman. Excuse me. She really she was really good. She, to me, she was like the standout of the film. Um, I yeah, I don't know. I don't. I think I don't. Really, I wouldn't I didn't recognize her. But this movie was getting a lot of buzz. It didn't do very well in the theater, right? And that's this is the one that really Scott started blaming Marvel because of. I, so stupid when people do that it's like don't don't blame your don't blame other movies because your movie didn't do well it's so silly it's like you can't you can't it's 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 that's you, that's what happened when star wars came out you're blaming you start blaming intelligence on people uh because it's, it's people aren't seeing your movie and this and that it's, it's just there's a lot there's a reason why people didn't see this movie uh jody jody Com comer what was she in what was she in Let's see what she's in, because um, cause I really liked her a lot. I thought she was great. Very electric. Freak, she was in Freak. Oh, wow. Was she, what was she in Freak Guy? Was she the main, was she the main person in Freak Guy? No. What was she in Free Guy? I don't remember her in Free Guy. What the hell? Wait, Free Guy. She was Millie? I don't know what that means. Was that the main girl? I don't know if she was the main girl. Was she the main girl in that? I can't remember. Either way, she was fantastic. She's fantastic in this movie. I really liked her a lot. Um, let me find out. She wasn't the main girl. She's right. You guys will tell me all this. You guys are yelling at me in the in the comments already. But guess what? I can't tell you because you're it's a premiere. I pre-taped this this morning. So jokes on you. All right. Let's see. I want to see now. Now I want to know. I mean, she was. I guess she was. She was Millie. She was the main one. Look at that. She, well, two movies in a row where she's great that I've seen. Saw that this this year too. Um, okay. Last duel. So this is, it takes true events. Um, Matt, what I really liked about if you guys, some of you probably have watched this show, The Affair, and some of you probably have not. I liked it. It was a show that was on HBO, well, Showtime for a bit. Um, it, it started getting shitty, I think, after like the season two or three, but I watched I watched the entire the entire run, whether it was four or five seasons. But essentially what would happen in, the, in this show was you would get, two characters or three characters in the show that you mostly two of them, but you would get their points of view um, of how they saw the events of the, uh, of, of the episode. Right. And that's essentially what happens in the duel last duel. You get three different stories, the same, three different versions of the same story. Um, you get Matt Damon's version, Adam driver's version. And then I'm going to get her name, right? I'm going to continue. Jody, Jody Combe. Uh, Comer, 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 Jody. We're gonna call her for this one. So you get all three of their interpretations of what happened, um, and I think it really works this way. It starts off a little bit slow, but I think that that works for the overall movie because it's this. You see, you see Matt Damon. He's this very loyal soldier who has a has comes from a very pop, you know, a a, a name, a noble name. But he doesn't really get the respect that he thinks he should. He's kind of a joke to Ben Affleck's character, who is who plays Pierre, who's like this. None of them's trying. Nobody's trying to really nail accents in this movie. By the way, they're kind of in and out. It's like Leia in, in New Hope, um, and they're all you know. Pierre is speaking with a Boston accent a lot of the times, but uh, it's Ben Affleck, so I was I was cool with it. He's good in the role. He's fine, um, but it didn't matter. The the. It, it, it was the story itself, and they go, it, he's trying to, he's just trying, Matt Damon, trying to get the respect, trying to get him and Adam Driver are boys, um, and they, they, they fight together. Adam Driver's got respect for him, but then things start happening, and he's, he's kind of thick-headed. He winds up getting married to, to Jody, uh, whose dad was kind of considered a traitor by many, and, um, and he still tries to get the respect, and he can't do it. And then they start to build this rivalry, him and Adam Driver, throughout it, with Adam Driver being very close to Ben Affleck, uh, his character who's very powerful, and then Adam Driver starts to get more, um, you know, more power as well. And and then an incident occurs, 
throughout the years. Something happens. And because of this, that ultimately leads to the last official duel where people had to fight to figure out if, okay, look, I'm, you're, you're, I'm, I'm accusing you of this, and I am denying that charge. Okay, well, if that is the case, then if the court approves it, we're going to fight, and God will decide. And if I win, it means that I'm right. And that's exactly what happened. God, God is shining down. You will die. Vice versa. So you can figure it out. I wouldn't do the research on the story beforehand because then you'll be spoiled on who wins the duel. Um, but it's good, man. I, I really liked it a lot. That was a really good movie. But as far as I understand why it didn't do well in the box office, it's long and it's not one of the... It doesn't work like that anymore, guys. That's what I'm... It's, really, Scott's old school. It doesn't work like that. And it tears... It goes right back in the West Side Story. Which is the next story here on, uh, where the hell is it? I love this movie. I love this movie. I just watched it again. I saw it in the theater for the screening. And then, so my daughter got uh, obsessed with the original. Showed her the original. today, And then I told her I got a screener for, for West Side Story. And the new one. She's like, well, let's watch it. So I watched it myself, my wife and my daughter. We watched it again the other day. And it's gorgeous it's so beautiful it is one of spielberg's best in a very long time it is gorgeous does it surprise me that it didn't do well in the theater no i when when you have all the hype of what's coming out with whether it's spider-man and matrix and people are not getting back into the theater as much as you know last couple of years people are going to be pick are going to be picky and choosy about uh about what they're going to see in the theater um a, a, a people i don't necessarily a lot of people call this a remake of the film i don't find this to be a remake of the film i think this is spielberg's interpretation of the broadway show in his stage is the the, the screen and that's where he wanted to put it. it takes place in the 50s it's a period piece it's a musical it's not Something a lot of people wanted to see. They should see it. It's gorgeous. It's great. I love that my daughter was into it. I love that my daughter was in it. But I, again, I, I didn't take my daughter to see it because in the theater. My daughter, because, uh, again, because of what's going on in the world, right? And I think that a lot of kids should be introduced to this movie. I think a lot of people should see this movie. But it's another reason. I just think a two-and-a-half-hour musical um, – Without any major stars in it, tough sell with Spielberg's name in general. I am bummed it did it. It, it sh I, I wish, I still think it deserves to do better than it did. I didn't think it was going to do like massive numbers, but it was, it was pretty, pretty low. What I hope happens is that people start seeing it. And I hope that it does get more nominations and it starts to build more. But I really liked the movie, man. Really loved it. Thought some of the performances were just next level stuff and the and the the lead uh rachel zegler oh man she's a superstar she's a superstar what a great movie great movie and the way that he changes things up and like certain like because I, I i just watched the original again and was able because i'd seen i had seen the remake or i just called it not a remake i had seen the new interpretation by spielberg and then the next day i watched the original so it was comparing and then i watched it again the new one and I was comparing back and forth, and I love the changes and what he did. It's a little bit more. I, I I don't want to be blasphemous here, but it's a little. It's it's way more authentic, I think, in general, and not just by the casting. Just like the 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 feel. I mean, the casting obviously, but the 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 feel of like even when Riff comes out, like Riff, who was it was such a fun performance in the sixty one version, right? But he was wearing like you know he looked like he could have gone to the country club right afterwards. He didn't look like Riff Raff. This kid that's playing ref, I mean, it looks like he's on the street. It's like a street gang. He felt more gritty. Or real. It was just something that he did, and it felt like it was plucked right out of the 50s. So it's a bummer that it didn't do well. I'll tell you what these kids did not do, though, these new these, these kids in the, in the movie. Um, they didn't brush their teeth, and they got to brush their teeth. They weren't brushing their teeth. You could tell a lot of yellow teeth in that movie because they're running around on the street. Brush your teeth. And in order to do so, you got to do it right. If you're already keeping your mouth in tip-top shape, that's great. But this time, why not earn some rewards while you're at it? Get Quip. 
and upgrade your Quip to a new smart motor. To you, what you can do is you can track and you can improve your brush with the free Quip app. You earn amazing rewards, free refills, products, Target gift cards, more. Now, beyond just the brush, Quip has a whole line of stock stuffers for everyone on your list. Floss, you floss string that expands to it clean. You can have your reusable floss pick that replaces over 180 disposable picks with every refill. There's refillable gum that's sugar-free, has long-lasting mint flavor, and it comes with a dispenser. What's really great is they have this refillable mouthwash. It's a f- four times concentrate, plus it's good for you, and it's good for the planet. But in addition to just brush heads, Quip also delivers fresh floss, toothpaste, mouthwash, and gum refills every three months for $5. That's it. Shipping's free, so you can save money. You can skip the hustle and bustle of shopping and in store during the holidays and you can run right into the new year even more good news quip is running their best deal of the year which means you won't be paying through the teeth when you gift your best oral health this year so if you go on over to getquip.com slash big thing right now on top of their holiday savings you're going to get your first refill free that is your first refill free at up to 40 percent off bundles getquip.com slash big thing G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash big thing. Quip, the good habits company. Yeah, man. So let's see. What else we got? Thank you, Quip. I love Quip. Uh, what else we got that we should talk about? Is before I get to your questions, a lot of great questions today. So maybe we'll just cut it a little short on the news and go into um, and go into the uh, the questions. But let me see if there's anything else that I'm missing. I got West Side Story. got Last Duel. What's this one? Golden Globes, we did. Batman, we did. I think, I think we got everything, guys. I think we got everything. Look at me. Look at me. We did everything. Okay. So let's get to some questions. So you guys, uh, in my um, in the link in this description on my Facebook page, I have uh, I I do when I do episodes like this, either the night before. I like to do it the night before. Um, sometimes it's the day of, but night before. I I post a uh, I post something to say hey I got some questions I got I'm doing a show with, with I need some questions so if you have one post it and there you go so follow me on that Facebook page if you haven't done it already and let's get into some of these questions there's some really good ones today really good ones let's start let's go in the bottom here and we go boom Rick Duran what up Rick Hey, Christian, congrats on everything. Thank you, sir. Spectacular. It was so much fun to attend. Can't wait for the free-for-all. Now that the digital era is coming to a close, what were some of the biggest production challenges from filming digitally? Thank you for that. So for those people on this channel for brand new to it or didn't even know about the Schmodown, and if uh, the professional, it's a professional sports league, mental sport league, and it's the movie Trivia Schmodown, and we've turned trivia into a sport, and we did our big event over the weekend, last weekend. Uh, so Rick, yeah, the the answer to that question is digitally was honestly it, just, it was built for a few months like to to survive. We did the we did the Star Wars tournament on Twitch, and that is where it was built to survive. It was built to survive just on for like a couple of months. I'm like, okay, then we'll be back in studio, and then it stretched, and then it was a full seat, the full the, the the entire last year. I'm like, okay, and and it worked. It was fine. People were still excited about it, and then it's like, okay, we're getting back in studio, and it's like, nope. We're not. We got to do more digital, more digital, more digital. That was a challenge because it's like it's just not when you compare it to even when we did like we shot at the the Scum and Villainy Cantina, which JC was so so welcoming and let us shoot there. It was like you could just tell the difference of the energy and like the how competitors got just revitalized from from being there and the energy. Like I had a conversation with with a competitor who was like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, and I go. All I'm telling you is come to the cantina and come to Spectacular and then see how you feel because this is not what the show is. And because the, the biggest challenge, as, as you asked, is that when you're in a high-profile match and you're playing, for a perfect example, let's look at the uh, let's look at the, the Inner Geekdom Championship match that just happened. And I won't give you a spoiler on it, but, let, but they're, they're playing against each other. And there's this massive... Thing. I'll go into Star Wars. Let's do a Star Wars match. Big Star Wars match between Nikki DiMolanta and um, and Thomas Harper. So they play this match. They have this big, crazy match. And at the very end, there's a winner, there's a loser. So when you, in the live event, I saw the loser immediately, said, what a, 
what a performance that was. Gave the person a hug. So the un- unbelievable match. And the person was able to kind of shake it off. You know, it still stings you, but shake it off. Be with people, watching the rest of the event, being around and having conversations, getting the accolades for having a great match. Digitally, that person would just been sitting in their room, turning their computer off in silence. And it's just, it's just not what it's supposed to be. So that was a that that that's been a massive challenge, and I'm I'm so glad. I know that people are tired of like I, it's just hard to explain it all the way. That the digital era, I'm very grateful for because it kept us alive. And the competition, Frank Janish said this on the rundown the other day. It was easily the most competitive two seasons that we've ever ever had. People, that's what's what everybody put their blood, sweat, and tears on. And I know that a lot of people who watched it, I I'm never disregarding the seasons and and the competition and the love and passion that you guys put into it watching it. It's just not the show. All right, next one. Let's get to the next one. Next question. Tan Eugene or Tan, I'm sorry. Hello, Chris. I have a question. With a lot of movies and TV series coming out in 2022, which one of those are you most excited to watch? Personally, I am very excited to see The Batman, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Moon Knight TV series, Obi-Wan Kenobi, John Wick Chapter 4, Jurassic World, Black Adam movie, and The Flash. We'd like to hear your thoughts. Thanks, and keep up the good work. Listen, man, you're, you're stealing a lot of my stuff here. Um, this, is a, this is a great list you've got. So, I mean, out of all of those, Obi-Wan and Mandalorian are probably the ones that I really want to see the most, obviously, for, for next year if we're talking about The Batman Obviously, the Batman is is something I'm I cannot wait to see. Um, yeah, and the Flash movie because of Michael Keaton. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot coming up that I want to see. But I think that hard for me to say if I can only have one. I mean, John Wick though. John Wick is just a, that's a very to me. It's like the newborn franchise, right? Like and it, different, very different. But but what I mean by that is that. When the first three Bourne movies came out, it was like you can watch all three of those movies, kind of forget what, which is which, but they're all so great and they all tie in really well. And you just, so, I would just watch them not too long ago, like last year. Um, and then they, the, the fourth one, just obviously with Renner, is just different. And, the, and then Jason Bourne just doesn't deliver. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but John Wick so far has that consistency of one, two, and three were all just really, really good movies. So I'm excited to see how the fourth one plays out. I am very excited for that one. And it's different. It's a different spin. Um, I'm not going to run off and start saying how um, MCU fatigued. There are I, I'm, I am formulaic for fatigued, if that makes sense. Um, this is why I like Eternals more, sh- more so than I did Shang-Chi. I did like Shang Chi. I just felt like I've there is there's a lot of cool stuff in it that I hadn't seen before, but it still felt like okay. This is just another this is another Marvel movie. Fine. Um, I don't love Hawkeye as much as everybody does. I like it. I enjoy watching it. I, it's it's a it is a it is a fun watch. Just not enjoying it. I think the way that everybody else is enjoying it. Um, and I don't know. It's, I, again, not fatigued, but I think I want like there's other things that I want to see. Um, and I think that like John Wick and some other, and I have to go through the the full list, but to me, it's Obi-Wan. Like that's the, that's, and, and it's, that's what I want to see. I can't wait to see that movie. I mean, that show, I cannot wait to see that show and how they're going to play everything on it. And or I'm excited to see how, how, how Andor plays out. All right, let's see. It's the next one. What do we got? Kevin Gujan. Hello, Christian. Great channel. Thank you, sir. What are you least looking forward to? In Obi Wan series, I assume that's what are you lost? I think least. I think that's least. Um, for me, it's Vader's return, and hopefully, oh wait, hmm, most. It's got to be most. Maybe it's most. What are you most looking forward to in Obi Wan series? For me, it, yeah, I'm going to say that it's most. I'm going to say that his his finger drifted off of of the L of the M and hit the L. What are you most looking forward to in Obi Wan? For me, it's Vader's return, and hopefully, Obi Wan trying to turn him back to the light side. Obi-Wan wants to start as you as you do. Yeah, that's what that's the whole reason from the second I thought that this was going to be a movie was because of that line. Um I feel that Obi-Wan's probably going to be in a place where, you know, he's got to it's it, very different from Luke. If he's if he's shutting him down, he's got to shut himself off from the force at some point because he doesn't want he doesn't want to, no one, the emperor or anybody to find him. So he's not it's not a matter of like Luke where he's just in in Last Jedi where he's like I don't want to be part of the force anymore. It's like no, I can't be because if I can't be then if because I am, then they're gonna they're gonna track me, 
but then he's going to realize that he's got to he's got to wake back up because he probably he probably gets jolted out of it from realizing that is that Vader's still alive or Anakin's still alive or maybe at this point he probably already knows I don't know either way we're gonna there's a lot that I'm looking forward to I'm looking for you're gonna have an eight year old Luke at this point right eight to ten whatever the hell he is um I think he's eight I think he's eight years after Sith so that I think he's like people are like oh he can't go off world why not who says that he had to be stuck on Tatooine the whole entire time? It's like he never he he was there for maybe maybe by the time we saw him he he hadn't got off planet in the last ten years he's been there for a bit and goes in end trying to get Vader back and feeling you know what I think I can try to turn this kid I think I can get him and then realizing he's more machine now than man it's just he's gone he's gone his his name is Darth so I'm going to call him Darth when I tell Luke about him later on. I'm going to call him Anakin. I'm going to call him Darth. Um, and then Deborah Chow is what I'm looking forward to the most. Loved her episodes of Mandalorian. I can't wait to see what she does in a full series. I love the idea that I got her for a full series. The difference between network television and streaming is that, you know, the idea that she knows from she knows what she's got from the beginning. She knows how she's going to end the series, and she's going to tell this kind of continued story and being able to work with these actors and the fact that Hayden's coming back, this is just, I, this is, to me, one of the most hyped Star Wars properties, movie or TV, that we've gotten in a very long time. Stoked for it. Can't wait. So, yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Keith Kempinch. Hey, Christian. You've talked at length about Star Wars being better suited to being series, but what kind of full-length film, not tied to any series, like a two-hour Mando finale kind of thing, would you get excited about seeing a Star Wars in theaters? Or rather, what kind of story do you think is best suited for the medium instead of a series? Um, so, great question. I do think that the Patty Jenkins Rogue Squadron was a great idea for a standalone movie. It's a one-off. There's no expectations tied to it. Uh, if it does eventually jumpstart, a, a, a series or something because of it, then great. But there's no expectations locked in. It could be a fun space battle. It's a fun movie overall. So I thought that would have been a great idea for it. They just couldn't come together creatively to make it happen. Um, on the same side of that, I do think whether it's the Old Republic or the High Republic or um, yeah, probably High Republic or New Republic, uh, I think that you could do a trilogy of movies or at least a movie first that ties into a series. And I know that you're asking what not doing that, but I think that any movie that comes out should eventually have an idea to become a series if it's, if it's popular and, and, and if it expands inside of that time period. So if you look at that eclipse video game that came out, the, the trailer or whatever it was, the announcement video that came out about it, that's a great announcement of how the high Republic looked because right now for, for people who are not, reading the books and not reading the comics. It's the first introduction visually to the High Republic. And it's like, oh, I mean, some people just thought it was the prequels or, or during that time period, but it's not. So, and a lot of time, a lot of people, including myself, think that that's what a great way that is to then tie that in to the Acolyte, which is supposed to be like 50 years before Phantom Menace or something. So the same can be said about a movie that comes out. And I think that a High Republic movie or a Old Republic movie is a great introduction. It should introduce the audience. I, I think a movie that introduces the audience to a time period or new characters, Expectations was one of the biggest letdowns in the new trilogy because of what people wanted, expectations of Luke, expectations of Leia, Han, expectations of what they set up for Rey in, in, the, in the first movie, then the second and the third. It's, it was just too much expectation. And I think that for, mo for expectation in television, you can get away with, okay, well, I thought this was going to happen. All right, we'll wait till next week. It didn't happen this week. We'll wait till next week. Okay, well, it happened in week three. It happened in week four. You know, three years or two years in between to, to wait and just sit in it. Um, so anyway, yeah, so that's uh, that's my thoughts on that. All right, I'm going to keep going. Got another one. Ryan Field. Yo, Christian, love the old school feel of the show so far. Thank you so much. You've got me watching every day. I love that. And I've probably listened to each of the rewatches at least twice I work in my shop. That's cool. My question, do you think Star Wars has turned a corner as far as tying things together from the books and games to the movies and TV shows? 
It used to be like you reading all the new canon stuff, but I fell off when I realized I wasn't getting the payoffs. I feel like we're basically getting back to how it was before where the books and games are their own thing that doesn't have to do with anything. Um, it depends. I don't think that Filoni is so locked into the books. Filoni is very locked into the TV shows, obviously. He had a lot to do with a lot of them. So I think TVs and film will always kind of uh, blend together unless there's something specific in like a comic. I think that one time... There was a comic in, inside the Canaan comic that played very uh, concurrent to one of the episodes in Rebels. So I think that that was something that happened. But a lot of the book stuff, I don't think Filoni pays too much attention to. I don't know how true that is, but I just just kind of, my gut, um, I wish that they would kind of tie some more stuff together. Maybe they tie more stuff together with the games, which would be smart considering how big the gaming industry is and if they could do some stuff i still think they should do some stuff with um what was the game that i'm terrible at that i that i always forget the name of the last one the last i don't know what the hell was it called you guys know the one that i kept falling off the cliff but anyway they should tie in those that video game um but they should do that they should uh fall in order is that what it is fall in order they should they should tie stuff together and 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 I still every chance I get to talk about this I still think that if there was if everyone always asks you if you if you go to the um if you go to fantasy booking if you were in charge of Lucasfilm what would you do to anybody to whether it's you me anybody um, the first thing I would do is I would get the creative team and said let's start looking at our books we have so many books with so many stories let's get a screenwriter in here and let's figure out how to adapt this now can we turn lost stars into a seven episode miniseries bane can we turn this into like four seasons five seasons of a television show can we do a kickoff of a movie based on this plagueis can we do darth plate with let's get james lucino in here let's just like you would you would have tv shows for days and really popular ones um i'm convinced of that on those at least those three the darth plagueis lost stars and the darth bane trilogy if you if you turn those into things and you got the right screenwriters and and obviously you always got to have the right team that's the that's the magic trick but to not explore those because they're books silly very silly i don't it, like uh, very silly and you know to say at one point that it, that there was no source material also uh, pay attention to what you have you got a lot you got a lot all right, keeping going, keeping going. Richard J., greetings from Camry. I had a question about HBO putting a spinoff Penguin series into production starring, starring Colin Farrell. I'm a little drunk right now. That's all right. And I'm struggling to articulate correctly. I've got it. So I'll just, I'll just ask what are your thoughts on HBO doing this before the movie has come out? I mean, it's always the, it's always the trick, right, is the putting out a, a show – or announcing another movie. Look at the monster movies. And like, okay, we're doing five monster movies now after The Mummy. Well, that didn't work out. Making these big announcements before they, before, you know, putting the um, the cart before the horse. Um, this is something that I think is a valid concern. However, for HBO Max to announce a Penguin series based off of the Batman around that time with a big movie star like Colin Farrell. It's worth a risk. It's worth the shot. It's HBO Max. It's not the CW or whatever it is. Another shot, nothing against Gotham or whatever it was. Like this is HBO Max. It's going to be darker. It's going to, they're going to be able to do some more stuff. Their HBO, DC Max shows have worked very well. Um, it's worth a shot. So announcing that as it, kind of ties into the Batman. Yeah, I think that's okay. I think it works. I, I understand the hesitancy and the question behind it. But before yeah, and and this movie's gonna do really well. It's gonna do really well. And and even if it's you know, he looks really good in it too. How it's gonna tie into it. And when then will he make an appearance is another question, right? Batman that is. So yeah, I'm all right with it. I'm okay with it. All right, we're going to keep moving on. Is that it? Is that everything? Where did it go? We did that one. Oh, no, we got two more. Ed Harrell, the great Ed. What's up, Christian? Good morning. Two questions. I think you heard, I think I heard you say you were moving the shows around. The big thing would still be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. No, no, no. But Sith Council will be Thursdays. No, no, no. Maybe it was 
the big thing was being tweaked to Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. No, no, no. And Zith Council Fridays. No, no, no. When will this change start? Second part of this. I know that pre tape shows are a huge benefit, but do you plan on doing more spur of the moment live shows day or later? I know you I know you know the the YouTube algorithm better than me, but fans still love and miss the live show and interaction. It's up to us to help get the word out. When they see you're alive for a spur of the moment show, they jump over immediately and excited when they're in live. When they miss it, they're pissed. Uh, thank you, Ed. Um, so a lot to take in from there. The first, uh, as far as the schedule goes, I was going to move everything this week, but I think I'm just going to keep it as is for now and not change it up until Boba Fett comes. So basically what will happen is once Boba Fett starts, it will be big thing on Monday, Thursday, and Friday will be a big thing. Monday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, Wednesday will be Sith Council, so we can cover the Boba Fett episode. So it'll be Monday, Thursday, and Friday for big thing. Um, and then, yeah, it'll be a lot of reviews and reactions. And if I miss certain things that are, you know, that are coming up story-wise, I'll do little story pieces. So it's like, oh, well, you're not doing a show on, on Tuesday and Wednesday on big things? Yeah, but I'll just do the, the little mini pieces on stuff that if you want to hear about it or trailers or reactions or that stuff. But the full-on shows will be Monday, Thursday, and Friday. And then Sith Council will be on Wednesday. So we can cover all of um, cover all of, of Boba when it comes out. So as far as live stuff goes, I mean, spur of the moment stuff on here, not so much because, like I said, there are certain channels that you can that you, YouTube does not – favor live streams as much as they used to there are some that are able to still do it there are some that that are are able to have that live uh like they get the notifications out if you do a live stream the notifications just aren't going out um and it's harder for me to do because of timing and everything i was able to do this this morning and put this one out um and be able to get get this up and then be able to tape another one for wednesday i've already taped you know pre-taped the the rewatches and then i then i have an opportunity to do trailer reviews and reactions it's just a lot easier it's a lot um it's also it just it just favors it more and i just there's something about the live stuff i just you know i i did it for a while you know we were the schmo show was like one of the first movie if not first movie long form shows to ever really do it and we did it for a while and I, we did it pretty successfully, but I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just not, it's just not my thing anymore. Um, I don't necessarily just need to do it anymore. I like the idea. And I, I like joining in the, on the conversation after we've shot and joining like right now, I'm probably joining. I'm probably in this chat right now with you guys watching on premiere. And I like doing that. I like watching you guys, um, have the conversation about it and talking through it. I did cause you know, Ed, it was you obviously because through the, I I almost I took because I had gotten recommendation to cut Premiere out also and say don't don't even do Premiere just run it live, um, but I like I know that you guys like to talk to each other and have conversations about it too and that's part of the community stuff so I opted to keep the Premiere and I think Premiere like works for this show, so yeah so that's it man all right last one and then I gotta get the hell out of here last one here it is okay last question Justin Square. I'm happy to see that you're enjoying the big thing so much. So my question is, what is your goal for this channel? Um, I want to do what... Thank you, Justin. So it was good seeing you at Spectacular, too, by the way, my friend. So the main goal of that is the reason why, in general... like I mentioned turds earlier this morning. There was a, there's a turd comment that I saw over the weekend, and I responded to the guy, and he might have he responded in, in a nice way afterwards. I, I don't know. But it was something along of just like, oh man, haven't seen Harloff and whatever, and uh, and and oh, it's gotta, it's gotta suck having only twenty five thousand subscribers. Taking that, uh, taking that, that paycheck from the studios probably hurts you. I was like, which studio? First of all, which studio am I taking the paycheck from? Do I wait? So I I like this movie, but I don't like that. It's and I didn't even get into that. I just said, hey, I don't know what kind of mood you're in today, um, but just to let you know, as far as twenty five thousand subscribers go, um, it took. Schmoes, no, I don't know, three years to get to twenty five thousand. We've done it in around three months on this channel um, as we're building. And the reason why I did it in general, and I saw people with criticisms and not understanding the game plan of like, why are you taking all of this, all of the, uh, all of the movie stuff and related stuff, and, and taking your like this show off of the sh channel with three hundred thousand and, and leading with Schmo down? Because there's a strategy behind it completely. Because the one reason is that if you have all of the content of movie trivia schmodown and this and SCN live all on one channel 
it is exhausting for you guys. It is exhausting because let's say you don't like the Schmodown and then you like this show, but then you're getting notifications for Schmodown. You're probably going to go, I don't know. I'll just, I'll see when there's an episode I like when he tweets it out and I'll watch that. As opposed to if you, that's why you're here, you know, when big thing comes out, you know that you're getting trailer reviews. And I, and I listened to what people are saying. They wanted to hear me do reviews again. They wanted to hear me do all this stuff. And so that's what this is for. It's, it's structured. Right, and the same goes for the other side of it. Let's say you wanted to watch just Schmodown, you're a Schmodown fan, and then you get all these different episodes of reviews and everything. I don't, I, I, I watch that other places. Like, so that's why a separation of it. So, Justin, to answer your question, the goal is to turn this into that kind of pop culture hub. What, what this has now done for me is what I've always wanted to do, and I've said it very clear in a lot of different comments and and videos. This is easily the most fun and that I've ever had doing this in the space ever. Because it is everything I've always wanted to do. Um, I'm able to wake up and say, okay, I'm going to shoot an episode here. I'm going to talk to the fans to do this. I'm going to format this out. I have nobody, no producer telling me what I need to talk about, what I can do, what I can't do. Um, I don't have to worry about a full crew. And I love working with the crew, but I don't have to worry about the full crew. People here on time. This costs, like all that. It's, it's the, it. We have that. We have that on SEN Live. We have that for if the interaction and the Schmobot and all that, that's there. But I just get to do what I wanted to do for a long time. And now I can do it here and it's working. So I'm just going to, so I just want to grow it out. I want this to be the, I want this to be, and people are asking, well, another, what happened to SEN? Nothing. If you look at the banner of this channel, it's SEN Presents. And SEN is the overall brand of this network. And I want SEN to have a full pop culture channel. And that's what this channel is. Anyway, that says a lot of talking. All right, look. I wanted to thank you guys so very much, and I appreciate everything that you've been doing. Uh, for Please subscribe to this channel. If you haven't done that already, please do it. And the way you do that, you hit the top left, subscribe. But look, and even if you're on this channel right now, it's that notification and the bells. And did you watch the Santa Claus video, you bastards? If you didn't, watch it. It's definitely one of the funniest things Brett and I ever did. It's on the channel. It's just called um, Santa Claus. Did they try to cancel Santa Claus? Just find it in the videos. I, we pieced it out. Thanks to PLD for that. Anyway, that's it. That's the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments. I'll respond. All right, everybody. Peace out. Thank you so much.